Hey, what's up, guys? This is Cody the Coin Raptor, and welcome to my channel. I'm here to provide you the best crypto content that you can find, starting with our chart TA. All right, so today I want to go ahead and go over the bear case scenario for Bitcoin. So we've had this massive chop going on here. We've had a huge drop in the price the last 24 hours. It finally found some support here at about 20,800. Um, I did I did do another small buy here at about 20,900 in that range or so. Uh, but I want to go ahead and, and pencil out the bear case here. And so what I want to show you is this is the the uh, formation so far, I think, of a potential bear flag. And so what a bear flag looks like is you have a pole that goes downwards and then you have a chop that goes up. You have a higher higher highs and higher lows, and then you have this flag here at the top, and then it the price just drops out the bottom. And so if we're looking at the bear case for Bitcoin, this is the formation that you're going to be looking at. This formation is very similar to what you'd see in a standard in a standard bear flag formation. And many people, uh, many bears uh, that I've I've looked at, and many other uh, chart TA uh, people have been looking at where the bottom would be in this worst case scenario. And the bottom for the worst case scenario here, which I've talked about a couple times, would actually be probably about in the 10,000 range or so. Usually they'd say, well, at the start of the, the previous bull market, or around that range or so, that is where you would have the bottom of of this formation. And that would probably be anywhere from about 12,000 to about 10,000 in that range. And so given this would be the absolute worst case for worst case scenario for Bitcoin, complete and total meltdown. From here we're looking at more than another 50% downwards move. I think that in order for this to happen, what you would have to have is you'd have to have major capitulation in the market, and you'd have to also have additional bad news, either uh, a really bad hack that happened or another crypto firm, a major crypto firm going bankrupt. Now, that's certainly a possibility, especially when the, the price makes a huge move down like that. However, um, I, don't, I don't like to speculate on that. And if it does actually happen where we see uh, another huge crypto firm go under, then then we can make that decision when it happens at the time. Now, this huge move down that we saw from about 47,000 all the way down to 17,000, this whole thing was precipitated by the collapse of UST Anchor and the collapse of, of several crypto firms like 3AC and Celsius and other firms like Hodlnot. And they were just completely wiped out in this whole range right here. So these, these this collapse didn't come from nowhere. It came from multiple institutions making risky investments and risky decisions and causing a cascading effect, a contagion effect, which drove the price all the way down. And so in order to see another 50% collapse, we would have to have another similar type of event. I don't think that's likely. I think that it's entirely possible that, that we'll continue downtrending for a little bit. Um, the stocks like to move together with crypto, and our crypto likes to move together with stocks. And the stock market it traditionally has a very poor September. And so I think that with September, we could also see a weakening of the crypto market. That's entirely very possible. Uh, the support levels right now I'm looking at, we go take a look at the hourly, or actually look at the daily. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to break out the support levels here. So right now, there is a support at about 20,000, uh, about 21,000 in this band. However, go from 21,000 down to 20,000. I expect 20,000 to be strong support. And if that fails, 19,000. All right. And if that fails, what we're looking at is new all time low at that point. It's about 17,600 to the new all time low. And uh, then we see a complete and total breakdown of the price, complete capitulation, and we'll wind up heading even lower. If we if we wick down below that that price here at seventeen six hundred, then we're gonna see um, we're gonna see a, a good chunk of selling. There's gonna be a lot of selling going on. One thing I want to draw your attention to is the fact that this volume candle that appeared here for um, for Friday for Black Friday is is the largest volume candle, the largest red volume candle since the June uh, collapse. 
So right now, sellers have had uh, almost an entire week straight of nothing but selling. So I expect the sellers are eventually, I expect the sellers are going to get exhausted here. We're probably going to see a relief rally in the near term. We could get a nice relief rally bump up to the 200-week moving average, which is about 23,000. I wouldn't be surprised that that's the case. However, what we really need to see is this support that we made, 20,800, that needs to hold. If that does not hold, then uh, then we have a, a few other support levels, and then it's watch out below. And um, and this doesn't really change my long term strategy. I would love to get in on some cheap Bitcoin. Anything that's that's sub twenty thousand would be very attractive for me. But again, I'm pursuing a DCA strategy. This is not financial advice. But for me. I'm a long-term holder. I'm expecting to hold these Bitcoins for yeah, a year, two, or three. I think the next big Bitcoin bull market will probably happen in 2024, and there's going to be a lot of money made in that bull market. So we take a look at Ethereum. Ethereum has held up very well. However, the, the, problem, the problem that I have with Ethereum is a very similar one that I have with Bitcoin, and that's the fact that we're approaching September. September is notoriously a bad month for stocks and crypto, and it just so also happens to be the month that the merge is happening. So I think Ethereum is going to wind up retracing pretty rapidly after the merge. And um, and we could see it return to about you know, the 1,300 levels or so. It might get a nice bounce from that point. But right now, it's it's not overbought nor oversold. So I'm looking to get into Ethereum at lower prices at, uh, than, than this one currently at 1,600. But overall, still very bullish uh, on the long term. On the long term for Ethereum, so uh, in a couple of years, in the next bull market, we could see a huge, huge run up for Ethereum. Now, if we actually check, take a look at the Ethereum dominance, I pointed out this a couple of times so far, but Ethereum dominance, it tried to push up here uh, at about 21%. It could not, and it fell out strongly off that that uh, that huge selling that we had. Uh, going on, on Friday. So this continues to be a huge area of resistance for Ethereum. So that's something I think that we should all be watching out for. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about one of our, uh, w let's go ahead and talk about the miners. So you may ask yourself, who's been selling this massive, massive move down for Bitcoin? Well, if you take a look at the miner outflow, uh, on CryptoQuant, and this is the, the mean, so it's the, the seven-day moving average for miners. So if you take a look at this, you can see that the outflow, which is the uh, seven days moving average of mean coins outflow for the affiliated miners' wallets. So this is miner wallets, and this is the outflow of the miners' wallets. And if you, can, if you take a look at this, you can see here that it's been on a pretty steep incline from about uh, early July now until about um, you know later late August or so, it's been on a very strong incline. Miners have been dumping coins at at a at an increased rate because right now many of them are unprofitable and many of them uh, have bills to pay and uh, electricity is becoming more and more expensive. So what we're going to see here is we're going to see a massive shakeout among miners. Miners will continue to sell, and they will continue to provide downward pressure on the Bitcoin price uh, and, and, and for the near future. And here's more proof that these miners have been capitulating. When you take a look at the total hash rate, okay, so this includes uh, basically the, the total hash rate is the totality of all the hashes being performed on the Bitcoin network. Okay, so you'll see that in times of, of uh, bull markets, it'll increase drastically as miners try to get in to mine Bitcoin to sell at higher prices. And bear markets, it will decrease rapidly. And we can see here that in August, it has decreased rapidly from 209 million down to 198, 197. And the reason for this is because many of these miners are unprofitable and they're forcing, they're, they're basically having to take their mining rigs offline in order to in order to stop losing money mining bitcoin so this is just another example that miners are getting squeezed they're getting squeezed hard it's difficulty for them to maintain profitability and they're having to shut down the rigs in order to avoid losing more and more money all right so that's all I've got for you guys today. If you like this content, please let me know. Please like and subscribe and also follow me on Twitter for the most up-to-date information that I have. This is Cody the Coin Raptor signing out.